Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader with a morning market update. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind you it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Bitcoin, and we are on the Bitstamp four hour chart currently. And uh, we got the pop up uh, that we were expecting here. Uh, this was basically just a little fake out um, on Saturday and then came back down in line with spot. It uh, looked like it was potentially going to sell off here, but it was getting picked back up uh, by the uh, 50 simple and uh, became pretty clear when we worked down a couple times and then just kept putting in uh, higher lows consistently uh, that we're going to get a push to the upside in an attempt to save the uh, 8 and 21 cross right here on the 4 hour. Uh, we now are all the way back up. We busted right through the uh, 528. We're back up to the 377 now and uh, we are nearly up to the 200 exponential. And the 382 fib, uh, any one of those points, anywhere from basically 10, 8, 48 um, to potentially like the 0.5, uh, 200 exponential, I'm sorry, 200 simple, or the 618 is going to be my final target for this. I'm not sure if we're going to get all the way back up to like that 11,370 range. Uh, that's where I would expect it to max out uh, at the absolute top. Um, but again, if we did get up to that level, it's possible we could see continuation. Uh, I would consider this still a bullish retrace of our bearish dump. Uh, it's still an internal retracement. Uh, if we did get all the way up here to the 618, that would be the 11,380. Uh, if we got up just to the 0.5, that's going to come in line with 11,061. Uh, but I think 11,2 is probably a safe target uh, right in the middle of all that. That's our 200 simple moving average. Uh, but we really have to take it, play it by ear, uh, see what happens here. It looks like we're going to get the close. Probably an initial little sell-off back to retest the 89 as support and then continuation. And then, uh, you know, you can see the knife down here is all the way at the top. Uh, we would expect it, you know, it can go higher than that, uh, but that's basically the area where it typically tops out at. Uh, we could expect basically this to cross back over, give us the hard buy signal, and then see continuation. And this basically is getting picked back up by the uh, TJD, TD, MACD. Uh, and then we see that continuation move. We see the... Uh, the positive cross uh, hard buy signal and then uh, basically get continuation to the top of the range now alternatively we could just sell right off here and then this would be a rejection of the purple that would be our retracement it would be essentially you know a, a weak retracement of the dump I think that's less likely to happen without at least tagging the 382 first uh, typically you're gonna see between the 382 and the 618 as a retracement um, but we did consolidate here for an awfully long time without any positive price action. So is it possible we would just get rejected from this area? Yes. I think it's much less likely that we're not going to at least reach, uh, you know, that, that, uh, 10, basically 770 to like 11,080 range. Um, so that's my next target. Uh, let's switch over to the daily and it's a little more clear here. That's basically that 382. Is attempting to cross the stop the uh, stop the cross between the 21 and the uh, 55 uh, exponential, and you'll see also that that's going to come in line with the parabolic star. So if we potentially got up a little higher, we could take that out, flip it green, and then sell back off, uh, come back down, and retest the 200 exponential on the daily. Um, again, we're very close to getting the buy signal right here. Um, more likely than not, what I think is going to happen more long term is. I think we're either going to get the cross and then cross right back over negative like we did right here where we get the hard buy and then the hard sell or I think we'll just get rejected. But at this point in time, again, the FIV level is going to come into line uh, with the um, 50 simple, which is what we were talking about. If we got all the way up to the 618, that 11.7, um, that would basically be in line with us attempting to save the cross retesting the 50 simple and then dumping off for continuation so uh, now let's switch over to ethereum and we're going to go through quite a few assets today i uh, took some requests from the group um, for just a couple different things they wanted to take a look at uh, we'll see ethereum also same thing uh, it had gotten up a little higher uh, yesterday ran away a little bit um, on the spot markets got all the way as high as 390 uh, and then started selling off started showing some weakness oh we're back at 382 now uh, target for Ethereum is going to be 396, um, and that's going to give us the 200 and the uh, 50 uh, simple cross. 
and uh, that would be a key place um, to get rejected on Ethereum, and uh, I would expect somewhere around that range. Uh, we can just toss a fib up on here real quick and see for our retracement where that's going to put us at. So we made it to the 0.5 already. Uh, that's basically nowhere's land, land in between. The 618 would be all the way up at like the 410 region. Um, so I don't think it's unrealistic that we could get um, get back up there on ETH. Uh, same thing, the indicator oscillators are a little more bullish. Uh, it's been getting like a little more bullish of a move. So um, naturally the moving averages are kind of trailing behind. Um, so far it's saving that cross. So once again, the 618 is going to come in line with the parabolic SAR. So uh, that's where I would expect it to potentially get up to. And same thing again. Uh, we potentially flip this over, get the hard buy, and then the hard sell right away. And it basically gets rejected. Already starting to look like a bullish engulfing candle too. Uh, next we have Chainlink uh, on the daily here. And Chainlink is basically getting stopped by the 8-day uh, moving average, uh, getting rejected. It was consolidating essentially at or below the 50 and 55 moving average. Uh, you can see the 50 is slightly above it, and it's been unable to get up to it. Uh, I think it's possible we get that test up back to uh, $13.10, although I would expect like the minor altcoins to be uh, much less bullish here uh, as the money starts shifting back into like the majors, uh, although Chainlink has been rather bullish throughout this whole run, so uh, it's possible to see you know, quite a bit of that extra money shift into this. Uh, if we got all the way back up to the SAR, it would put us close to like $14.90, uh, $15 range. Retest of the support we broke down from, definitely a possibility. Uh, BNB, um, I mean this thing is blue sky breakout. I was expecting it to maybe like come back down and retest uh, the previous high of $26.92. Uh, it looked like it was going to do that, but it's going full on parabolic now. Um, and you know, like I said, anything that's making highs is going to continue to make new highs. Uh, until it doesn't so you got the histogram above the slope it's blue you got the hard buy back here at uh, $24 uh, it's up another $9 since then already I mean there's no resistance I would expect it to just keep going up uh, until it sells off and uh, when it does sell off I would expect the target to be like $25.88 $26 basically and see if that holds and then if that holds uh, you know just continuation basically uh, but it does look exhausted. It's definitely getting to the top of the range. But, I mean, when you're in blue sky breakout, you can keep running forever. Uh, there's no resistance. There's no sellers. It's only people just taking profits. And there's no reason to take profits. You might as well just set your stop loss. So, uh, even if we come down or whatever, you just put it behind uh, the previous candle close. Uh, it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. But, I mean, if it's never just taking out, like, the previous candle, that's all this is, is stop hunting and continuation. So, uh, you know, if that potentially took you out, you could rebuy uh, if it looks bullish again, but in this case, it's full on parabolic. I would expect continuation. Uh, next, we have SPX on the daily. Uh, we sold off violently. Um, you know, we were calling the chop out here. Basically, came back down looking for support uh, at the 21. Um, we were able to keep it, maintain it, and then we reopened uh, basically just directly down below it. We dragged them down. We actually got the cross. Uh, we were saved by the 50 and the 55. Uh, but we are now running into resistance at our previous top uh, from way back when. That was our previous high. Um, and then also now we're below that. And that's coming in line perfectly with the uh, 8 and 21. So in my opinion, uh, we could see a wick come up here and go higher. But I don't think we're going to be able to get back above this and stay cross. But it doesn't mean we can't. I mean, we got the cross on the histogram. We now have a red slope. On the TJD, TD, MACD, uh, we got the hard sell uh, at the top right here on the Jewel Thief. Uh, I would expect continuation, although, you know, we could see basically consolidation here, move back up to another lower high, uh, which in that case I would expect like 3,528. 3, um, but it's tough to get bullish on this. I just don't know if we're going to continue seeing like levered buyers coming in. Uh, you know, you can definitely call this like the, the end of the sell off, at least for now. And this would be our bullish retracement of the bearish dump. Uh, that would have us coming back in for the 618 at 3,472. Uh, but again, the 786 is going to come in line with that previous uh, top right there. Um, I would not get super bullish on this, obviously. I would expect most people are taking profits uh, in traditional markets. Uh, short and long term, we have to play it by ear. Uh, daily cross on the 8 and 21 is obviously bearish. So that would be a hard sell signal for us. If you didn't take the sell signal right at the time, 
uh, you know, you'd be looking to take it somewhere in this range, um, you know, take profits on at least, you know, part of your positions, maybe let some of your, uh, some of your profits ride. But overall, you know, I would be de-risking. Same thing with Tesla. Tesla's getting that push up now. Uh, if it comes all the way back up to the parabolic star. That would be our 446 range, 443 range. Uh, if we took that out, uh, same thing. We found support. We are now attempting to stop the cross on the 8 and 21. Uh, this is slightly more bullish. We are seeing green histogram wicks. Uh, once again, I would expect to come back up and then get rejected uh, and just put in a lower high. Uh, and then the DXY. Uh, we did get the positive cross on the 821, consolidate above it. We are now getting a push back down again. Uh, I would expect same thing right here, but if traditional markets and all these other stocks and everything take off, uh, it's not unrealistic to think we could top out here, come back down and retest these lows again. Uh, but I am bullish on the dollar long term. Uh, and then gold is bullish. We're basically consolidating in this what, you know, basically to the untrained eye would look like a descending triangle. Uh, but... You know, it never really was able to break down below and it's essentially just consolidated at the same level. You know, it looks like there was initially people taking profits, but there's no actual sellers coming in. Uh, you would expect, obviously, this has a more more high likelihood of breaking to the downside. Uh, but, you know, it's definitely not a symmetrical triangle. It's a descending triangle, but it doesn't mean it's 100 percent going to break to the downside. Uh, if we did get the measured move, I would expect it to uh, like the 55 or maybe the 89. But I'm bullish on gold. I mean, I think any push down is just going to be a buying opportunity uh, as we're running into actual like shortages and actual demand uh, for physical gold. Uh, and then obviously like mining stocks are going to be going up uh, exponentially. Um, same with like, you know, all the actual fundamentals, uh, not only the technicals, just behind like the lack of ability to like pack these mines full of people and, you know, essentially like lack of workers in uh, the different areas that they need them. Uh, it's going to basically throttle production and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of extra demand coming in and then all of a sudden you have wall street guys paying attention for the first time uh, you have a lot of other countries like china and india been paying attention for years uh, looks like we are getting ready to get the hard buy again uh, and then continuation to the upside uh, on the daily for gold uh, and then silver actually has managed to stay like slightly more bullish um, for whatever reason, it never really got like the cross here and once again, it's maintaining it and it's just going to do the same thing that gold does. I would expect at some point in time, uh, once they do start running again for silver to run higher and faster uh, as it still has not retested its previous high and the uh, gold silver ratio is much higher than usual. Uh, it takes much more silver uh, to buy a single ounce of gold uh, than typical and I would expect at some point in time that to come back near to uh, like the 50 range or potentially 20 um, you know depending on how bullish silver gets and uh, you know how much demand there is but I can't remember the exact stats but we've been essentially running a deficit on silver uh, for like 20 years we've basically been producing worldwide less silver uh, than we've been consuming for actual like usage in like computer parts and you know necessities in manufacturing and production uh, not to mention you know the actual demand for uh, like silver bullion uh, so there you have it, guys. Took a look at a bunch of different assets today uh, as per request of the uh, group. Um, definitely uh, looking forward to where these markets shape up to. And uh, definitely uh, overall looking like short-term bullish on uh, most of these assets. Uh, but uh, long-term, it uh, looks like we may be confirming tops uh, very soon as we come up and put in lower highs. So uh, there you have it, Crypto Trend Trader. Another uh, quick market update. And I'm out of here.